Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of R. Kelly Appeal, Robert Sylvester Kelly, Chicago trial, and the appeal of the federal case. So I do have um, the actual footage of the Oshun Orisha conversation. And the daughter of Oshun is here. And I believe that that played a big role in what how this whole thing went down. Um, we needed to make sure that we had the right terminology for the gods to understand what's going on. But I do want to talk before we get into the Orisha conversation. I definitely want to talk about R. Kelly's manager begins trial over theater emptying threat. There was a threat or some sort. So let's listen. All right, so the news media published on Fox News, July 21st, 2022 at 4.27 p.m. that R. Kelly's manager begins trial over theater emptying threat. R. Kelly's manager, Donald Russell, started his trial Tuesday and the trial of R. Kelly's manager began Tuesday over charges that he forced the cancellation of a 2018 screening of surviving R. Kelly documentary about the singer's sexual abuse of women and girls by calling in an active shooter threat to the Pat New York Theater. Donnell Russell is on trial for allegedly phonying the New House Madison Square on December 4th, 2018 and telling a staff member that someone in the crowd theater had a gun in their possession and was going to shoot up the event, which, which required evacuation of the building. Um, the trial of R. Kelly's manager commenced Tuesday over charges that he forced the cancellation of a screening of a documentary about the singer's sexual abuse of women and girls. And assistant U.S. attorney Laura Pamarantz told jurors that Russell knew his words would sabotage the event. The defendant wanted to keep the women quiet, Pomerat said in Manhattan Federal Court. She added that Russell was motivated by a desire to protect Kelly's career. Kelly was convicted in 2021 of racketeering and sex trafficking and was sentenced last month to 30 years in prison. Defense attorney Michael Friedman told jurors that they would exonerate Russell if they studied the evidence. The man who received the call at the New York Theater, Adrian Krasniki, testified in court. Krasniki also worked at the venue. He pointed out that he received the threatening phone call less than an hour after a man who claimed to be part of Kelly's legal team called. The caller said the surviving R. Kelly documentary was violating the R&B singer's copyright to his name and should not be shown. Krasniki described the caller as someone who had a low professional sounding voice. He testified that the caller said in a very serious and very blunt manner that someone had a gun and they were going to shoot up the place. Krasniki noted during cross-examination that he believed the caller had a Brooklyn accent which he recognized since he's from the area. He also said the caller sounded like he was outside when he made the threat. So there's, uh, this is what's going on right now. And this is something that just came up. Um, and I wonder if this is going to be, um, well, don't, Donnell Russell is accused of forcing um, the cancellation of a surviving R. Kelly's screening by calling in a threat to a crowded Manhattan theater. And he is facing trials over theater emptying threat. So this is what's going on in the Chicago trial as of now. So that's what's happening for um, it was filed Tuesday and the trial for Don Donnell Russell has began.
Now we're going to move on into the conversation that should have took place yesterday. And it is with the daughter of Arisha, of the Arisha. And she's going to talk about her points of view and what she feels about R. Kelly and about how the future must tie into the clearing out of the past. And that's how the energy will be able to funnel through the future in a productive way. So let's listen to this conversation. Here we go. Things happened the way that they did in my life is because it's the same exact thing that happened to her when she was on this earth. That's why she's my guardian. Oh. All the way down to kids, all the way down to um, youth, youth of, uh, this, this is, her story is very different. It's very different, but all of us can relate to our guardians because we all have guardians. Mm-hmm. We're not just here by ourselves, we're angels, but they're ancestors. But there's no, some people do not to name them specifically. Uh, and then some people, like me, I have to get, I have to know everything about everything so I can understand and process it. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so, but that's not for everybody. It's not, it's, the journey is not for everybody. Everybody does not need this. People will save a lot of money. Um, you uh-huh. know, I mean, yeah. because it is a little costly, but your future, a lot of karmic ties, a lot of, like, negativity that we incarnate with on this lifetime, it's kind of like taken away from us when, when we take that step to, because it's in our destiny, you know, it's not in everybody's destiny to do this. Right. And it's very... It's not easy. It is not easy at all. So what I are think some... the easiest thing would be going to church and saying a prayer and hey, goodbye, you know? All right. So like so in... Right. So in, so in Rob, um, Robert Sylvester Kelly's case, if he was going through, say, an Arisha um, consecration or whatever, what would he find out about himself? Um, oh, he would find out his destiny. He would find out, like, his purpose, what to invest in, what not to invest in, um, who to be around, who not to be around. It's, it's very, it's a very informative journey because you can ask all kinds of questions, get all kinds of answers, and it's pertaining to your life and helping you. Yeah. And I do believe he had access to that because... Like, if you look at the rapper Future, he wears something that's called LA Keys. I see Future with the LA Keys on, which is nothing but the 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 necklace that you wear around your neck to be identified in heaven. So they have different colors. Green is for Ifa. Uh, uh, blue is for Yemoja. Yellow is for Oshun. So I, I see, you know, who has what. In the industry, I do believe that they they're, they're practitioners in the industry. I really do believe that. So, do you think that Robert Sylvester Kelly could have ever uh, dodged this situation that happened in his life based on the Ashun um, religion? Could you go to your phone, take us off speaker because we're getting a lot of feedback. If you can. I'm sorry. Say that one more time. Mom. Could you take us off a of speaker because you're getting a lot of feedback. I'm up there. Oh, Lord. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Do you believe that R. Kelly would have been able to escape what actually occurred if he had been more in tune with his energy of a shoon? Well, okay. You're asking me if he, would he have been able to escape what happens to him right now? Yeah. Uh, no, because it's fate, it's, it's destiny. Anything that happens in his lifetime is not planned. I mean, it's already written out. We just gotta go with the go with the flow. We gotta take the the good with the bad, the high and the low, the duality. So if it was already written, it was already written. But we don't know how it's gonna turn out. So you know, and that, he may know. Like he may he may know what's going to happen to him because he's him. You know what I mean? But for the rest of us, we gotta be careful. Oh, we talked about energy harvesting. Yeah. Um, we got to be careful. 
Mm-hmm. Where, where, we, where your attention grows, it, sorry, where your attention goes, it grows. Yes. You know, so even if it's not looking the best or you got to, you got to convince yourself conscious mind that it is. You got to convince yourself that you already have it. You already are free. You got to, you know, that's the way you get up out of that. Yeah. So hopefully, but, but to answer your question, I don't, I'm, I can't really say, but from my understanding, no, because they will take things from you if you are not walking in alignment or if you're abusing. Um, I used to win a lot of money in the casino, and I have an ancestor that's in the casino, and I was literally abusing my, my you know, hand, basically. So it was taken. Right. That, that's what will happen if you abuse things and you're not sincere and pure, you know? Yes, so. and, and then that goes back to what we talked about yesterday in the uh, video that we couldn't find today when we talked about the doppelganger. <laughs> You know, you have that that spiritual energy that resides in you that is pure, but then you have that physical man that reflects who you are on planet Earth. So when you learn manipulation through narcissistic parenting, through um, abuse and trauma, that plays out in more of the more negative part of the doppelganger ego energy. You know, and and that's that's where I believe that a lot of what we have been taught, especially with the Bothamists and with the um, the Illuminati and different things like that. That's that power and that energy, because right now I believe that the the physical area of the musical industry is going back to 1994 or 2008. We're living in the realm of 2008. What do you think about that? Like he's getting re punished for what he did in 2008 because they're vibing off of that energy. Uh-huh. What do you think about that? Uh, I'm sorry, repeat the question one more time. What do you think of, kind of loud. Yeah, what do you think about the energy of being fueled off of the punishment that he should have got in 2008? But in 2022, oh, we're still going back oh. there. This is doppelganger energy. We're going back to Man, reinvent listen. 2008 again, all over. You know, we only go to, we only get karma for things we didn't get caught doing, not what we got caught doing. <laughs> so, you know, you got to think about that too. That's, I, think, I believe that's what's going on with him. Like, so as, as well as all, you know, my jail time, my, my person wasn't for what I didn't get caught doing. I mean, what I got caught doing, it was for what I did get caught doing because subconsciously I was, I was, um, manifesting that for myself because I didn't feel, I didn't feel okay with what I had done to get to where I was, mm-hmm. you know, like it wasn't righteous. So therefore the universe gave me that back in the form of what it felt that my subconscious felt. That's why we got to be careful what it is that we think and what we do. Right. You know? And that's why him being punished right now for something that happened so far back, they want to take the 50-year-old mature man that has grown from his lessons and throw him back into the childhood stage. To, uh-huh. to punish because him. Because that's the only way they can strip you. That's the only way they can strip you of everything that you just learned. <laughs> you do it faithfully. You know, you're... But see, we... It's like this. You know, he, he does not... Like we talked about yesterday, I don't see that he owns himself. So, therefore, whatever happens to him, he's got to separate himself from that entity that is R. Kelly and become Robert Sylvester Kelly. And only then will things start to clear for him. Right. You know, because he's been in that identity so long. You remember that lady on that, uh, what is it, Uh, SBU Law and Order? Yeah. She played... The, the lady played the part of the lady so long she actually didn't know the, her right from her left. She actually believed that she was, uh, what was her name, Sandy or Sandra? Uh-huh. Something like that. She she, be, she had to go to counseling. Like, she had to get therapy, serious therapy, because she could not tell the difference. She couldn't separate herself from that character. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And see, that's the trauma. That's the trauma we possess. Like we said yesterday in the interview, the do- the only way a doctor can never have a malpractice suit is to do what? 
pretend to be a doctor in Hollywood. When you're a doctor in Hollywood, you can make as many malpractice issues that you can. You can you can possibly, you know, uh, do anything you want to do. And you never have to deal with a consequence. But that's only in Hollywood. It's only in Hollywood. So, I mean, it, 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 it just makes me feel some type of way when we say that we're learning and we're growing, but people want to hold all of our things that we've done in the past against us, even through the growth. You know, once we see that we've grown, I'm not seeing a person that's continually doing the addictive behavior and then never growing out of that addiction. But when you're trying to help yourself, when you're trying to heal and Sunday at six, we're going to have a live. I'm going to bring something back to our memories for that. R. Kelly was approaching in 2000. So, yeah, that's that's coming up. But um, and once we see the collaboration in him growing from R. Kelly to Robert Sylvester Kelly, then we're going to see the significant shift and how the media and social media and Hollywood took him down for the change. And that's sad. That's so sad. So, um, you know, we talked yesterday about how, you know, I felt that he was going for protection to Louis Farrakhan. And you mentioned that or no, that he was um, trying to go for prayer with Louis Farrakhan. And you said yesterday how, you know, sometimes people run to the Muslim tradition for protection. Remember, we yeah, talked absolutely. about that. Could you yeah, go yeah, back? Yeah. yeah. And it's not. It's like this. There should be no one at the top of an organization and everybody else follow. It should be everybody following, everybody learning, growing, et cetera. It should not be. That's a pyramid right there, you know? Mm -hmm. So him him going to Farrakhan, um, now no disrespect to anyone or what they believe or what they practice or anything like that, but um, I don't, from my understanding, they teach the laws of the universe, but they don't. It's like you're still underneath someone. You're not supposed to be underneath anyone. You're supposed to be on the same level and the same frequency. So I believe that him doing that was just a cry for help. You know, that's what they do when they're like, when, like like we were talking about. Uh, what is it, Michael Jackson? He was like, I know somebody's coming. I know they're coming. They're coming to get me. Because he was trying to do, he was trying to own his master. I think that R. Kelly might have been trying to do something that they the powers that we didn't agree with, and then that's when he boom went to first time, like, look, I need help, etc. But see, it's only so much he can do too, because I truly believe that he he manipulating people on a certain to a certain extent too. Every every because, leader who holds a mass amount of power has some form of manipulation. My friend and I were talking you about that with today. The you working with them people? Mm -hmm. You working with them people too? He's not. It's not. You know, because if if that was the case, he'd be teaching about universalism and togetherness instead of just this, this one movement where, you know, it's us against them. It yeah. be against, first of all, when we all leave this earth and transcend, it, it goes back to energy. Nobody has a, a color. Nobody has a, you know, a, um, a, um, a, a gender or nothing like that. It's your spirit. It's your soul, you know? Yeah. So him doing that, you know, might not have been a good idea because it didn't get him far. Obviously, you know, he still... He still had to, had to still, face... Yeah, he did. He still had to face. You can't run from your fate. Mm -hmm. You cannot run from your fate. Your fate is still, once you, you know, become of age and understand what's going on and still make the decisions to continue. Now, because one thing... You want, mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's just that the things that we talked about yesterday is popping up in my head. Like you were saying that the way the way that he can defeat the demon that's trying to hold him back, even in the Chicago trial, where they're going back to 2008 and re um, reestablishing things that happened that he was already found not guilty of. Now, at that point. Is there any way that he will be able to save himself? And you came up with a very good point yesterday. And it was about the purity in his heart. Remember that? 
Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, the purity. Yep, yep. Go ahead. Talk to us it, about that. So ultimately, it's going to be up to him. And we don't know okay, you gotta you gotta, gotta come closer right. to the phone. We can't hear you. I'm sorry, okay. you gotta come closer. Um, ultimately, you. it's gonna be up to him. You know, we all we all know the Arcadia that we love, that we grew up off of, and there was a lot of babies made in the world off of R. Kelly and his music. And you know, it it fueled the population, so they knew what they were doing when they came out with that. You know, that bump and grind stuff, and then he transitioned from that to to the grown and sexy stuff, like you said yesterday. But ultimately, it's, it's, he got to go within, you know, um, because what's within is only going to radiate on the outside world, you know. So if he feels like he's got some things that he needs to deal with or he's holding guilt for some things that he's done that he know that he did, that he know he was wrong, he got to come to a, a peace with that. He's got to come to, he got to forgive himself first. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, you know, know, forgive everyone around him, and then things will start to transition for him from the outside in. Right. You know, it's like a mirror. It's like what's going on is like a mirror. Yeah, we talked so about he's that the too. Behind the mirror. Yeah. And everybody that's pointing fingers at him is him. It's, it's a version of him. Like. Right. We talked so about. Overstand that. Yeah, we talked about being incarcerated and how the difference between the mirrors in the outside world and the mirrors on the inside is that it's distorted, like a big circus. Like, and you, you, uh-huh. you pointed on something, and could you speak about that again today? Oh yeah. Um. So, and thank you, thank you again for having me. Thank you so much. Oh yes, um, thank you for being so here. So the mirror. <laughs> It's funny how they do have those distorted mirrors inside of those prisons. And it's like you can really only see your aura or your aura field if you're even tapped in that enough to, to see that. But it looked like a clown mirror. Looks like, a, like you know, you go to the um, the circus, like you just said. So mm-hmm. it's really meant for him to turn that, you know, what's going on in the world and what people are saying and the gossip and all that other shit. Excuse me. Turn that within. You know, turn that off and go within. Because, again, he, he's going to have to rebuild himself. He's going to have to strip himself of that old identity. That's the only way that he can, you know, come out victorious of this is for him to truly believe that he is, you know, he's not a bad person. He doesn't deserve this. If you fight for yourself, you fight for your right to live, then at the end of the day, no one is God. There's only one. And no one is him here on this earth. We are a reflection of God, but we're not God, you know? Mm-hmm. And in the court of law, they are not God. So, you know, there's no, um, there's no, uh, in the court of law, there's, they don't really care about spirituality and what we've been through and trauma and abuse. So he's got to go back, like he used to tell me, go to your inner child first. That's where you got to start, his inner child. But I do believe that he already knows this. For him to be the statue that he was in the in society, you've got to have a certain amount of knowledge to acquire that power. So I do believe that he's tuned and hip to everything. Right. Um, it may just be his his time, though. This is his time that he may need to take to to go within. You know. Now, when you say go within, you're right because every one of us who has been incarcerated, we go within and we go back to that child that we where we first started at. So if we were uh, dealing with the the trauma of a child at the age of two, when we become 22, we're going to act like we're two. When we become 40 and our trauma hit us at 14, we're going to constantly stay at that age of 14. And that's why a lot of leaders and, and, and mature people look so ignorant and so immature and they do traumatic things because they're still traumatized so i so get what you're saying with him by going with them but he has to get the help to even know that the trauma of him at eight year year old rob when he was living in the projects of chicago the biggest fastest city in the world at that time made him who he who he probably felt he needed to be 
you know, like a player, you know, have a lot of women, take care of a lot of women, you know, be handsome, look good, sing good, smell good, do all that great stuff. But now he doesn't have his his black. He doesn't have his cologne uh, collection. He doesn't have his five hundred, six hundred dollar shirts to prove that he's uh -huh. someone. So when he puts on that orange garb, he has to play the part of the true wonder man, the man that everyone loves. But it's very difficult when you're in a clown suit, when you're in the circus. Yeah, you got to take it off. You got to take, take it, it off. off. Once you make that decision to take it off, then, you know, I think that things will get better for him. But this may be what he feel like he needs. You know, because remember, there is no judge. There is no jury. There, I mean, it's just a, a, a reflection of your perception. Yeah. If they gave him all that time subconsciously, he must have felt like, damn, I deserve this. <laughs> you know, he might yeah. not have said it like, no, I don't deserve But the way it played out, and it, it didn't look fair, but also, we cannot interfere with the next person's karma in any way. Because that will be, then it will become our karma. Right. You know, and this is karma, unfortunately for him. It's, it is karma. But he can overcome this. Anybody can. That's the whole point. Now let's talk so about that. that. You are strong enough to overcome this. Yes, let's talk about that. Um, so if we were to go through a four-step process of overcoming and recreating his dynamic of his future, what four processes would we tell him to go through? Like step number one. Uh, see, that, that's like, that's kind of... Like Controlling said, it. Journey is different. Everyone's yeah. journey is different. Right. So what works for me might not work for you, and we got to understand that. So he, he work, where he is right now is where he's supposed to be, unfortunately. It's unfortunately. I did four years. Okay? I didn't want to accept the fact that I was supposed to be there. I didn't want to accept the fact that I had created that reality for myself. However, that moment you accept it, things start to shift for you. Your reality starts to shift. Things start to happen. You know, doors start to open. Next thing you know, you're free. Yeah, shape shifting. Okay? Like, it's, it's just that simple. And he knows that because he manifested millions of dollars across the country. He's still across, manifesting. The world, the country. Listen, he um, is still manifesting money right now. You have Country Wayne, who is a um, number one YouTube comedian, singing his songs right now, making hundreds of thousands of dollars off of YouTube in a month's time. You have... Um, people who are impersonating him with his music, he's still making money while sitting still uh -huh. because that name, Robert Sylvester Kelly, that name comes with bringing people and it comes with bringing money. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And and that's something that I feel that Robert can manifest. He is a great manifester. Other than that, he wouldn't have manifested this for his life, not this part, but the billionaire that he became and the world famous musician and artist. Do you know what I mean? It takes a lot to think about that and make it come true. So I get it. I get it. And you're right. This is his journey. And the way he recreates his future is based upon the guilt that he holds in his own psyche. Because the demons will continue to... to to romance him in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and you know that industry is is filled with a lot of you know occultic stuff, a lot of magic. A lot. You gotta protect yourself, especially the rappers and the singers and stuff, because but like with the things that you can't see are being thrown at, at at them. And if they're not smart enough, I remember uh, a rapper had an interview. I don't know if it was Juice World or it was someone who had an interview who was talking about. When he had first got into the industry, there was all these things popping up like, hey, take this pill, hey, do this, hey, pump this blood, hey, do this. You know, it was a lot of things being presented to him because um, there are, you know, there, there, there are people in that industry that can manipulate energy and towards other people to make them a little absent minded, a little more open, a little more vulnerable. Now, next thing you know, you're doing drugs and going down, the, you know, yeah. stuff like that. So 
You can even I, t- you can even look at it in the homeless world of any large city. The major thing about blood is the blood banks. Every city has a blood bank, and blood is paid for now. You can literally get six hundred dollars a month for your plasma. That right there shows us that the blood is in the blood. Right with me. That don't sit. It don't sit right. It's why weird. are you taking really why are we taking blood from people who could barely even eat just to give them money to feed themselves? What are we doing with that blood? Oh. You know, is it being is it being Ritual, pathogized? Probably, yeah, you never All know. Kinds of stuff. Clone ass, you know, I mean but you know, I, I it's a part of me. I do empathize with him because, you know, I did time in prison myself, um, and it it was for money. It was for greed, you know, just being greedy, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just like, damn, the minute one of them starts to rise and starts to become a little more conscious and stop the, you know, jumping around and grinding on the ground and stuff, and then they want to buy businesses and property and get their stuff, like Young Dolph, rest in peace Young Dolph, but he was trying to buy a share of Empire Empire Records because he had been, uh, you know, a, a, a partner with them for years, so Empire Records was literally built up the foot of his back, uh, along with a lot of other artists, and as soon as they go to ask for that, for that you know, oh, let me try to try to uh, become a part owner or own my masters that you know they they're 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 alive because they're in a they're in a a system of slavery it may be an upper level not like the slave ship in a prison or not like the slave ship of poverty but they're in a more higher dimension of this is how far you're allowed to go in this world Unless you are, you know, blessed with this or that, unless you're entitled. So with him being in that position, it makes me think that, yeah, you know, we talked. I had either you and I talked about this yesterday or someone else talked to me today about it. It had to do with the fear of why he didn't get taken out like Whitney Houston or Bobby Christina or Nick Gordon. I think that was the Bobby Christina's boy, boyfriend, right? Nick Nick Gordon, I think, or Nick Cannon. I can't remember. But, um, yeah, so all of them died. But the only one that saved face that lived was Bobby Brown. When Bobby Brown was the one. Yeah, Bobby Brown was the one that was supposed to be the bad boy. <laughs> he was supposed to be the bad boy, but somehow or another. Wait a minute. What, what did you say? I'm sorry. He just nothing, nothing. I didn't say anything. Yeah. I didn't say anything. Right. But and the same thing with Michael Jackson. So sad. Yeah. Michael Jackson was and another one. If you look one. at the footage, there's footage of Brandy at that party that Whitney Houston was at, and Whitney passed her note, and Brandy looked at Whitney, and Whitney looked at Brandy, and it was like. Because Clive was Davis. She knew something was going to go on. Yeah, Clive Davis like, was letting her know. Labels. Yeah. Claude these Davis have death clauses on these rappers and singers. They have something when you sign that contract. There's a death clause attached to it that says that if you die in a certain amount of time uh, and you have not paid back what the label has gave you, they get right to everything and a big ass life insurance policy. Yeah. language. Yeah. So, and and that's that's what I was going to say. Same when they go to prison too. You ever notice when they go to prison, their sales skyrocket and people get in, get start getting. Uh, interested in them again and stuff like that and whether it's bad publicity or good publicity they still get public but what they're doing they're, they're is still going they're still manufacturing the energy in which they began and so yep, yep. when you stream something yep. when you make money off of something R. Kelly is not making any money no matter how big his music is now skyrocketing he's paying back as a slave to the slave master what they feel he deserves to give to them because they put up money from the front end 
but it's so not right yeah. because exactly. look at all that he gave. Look at the blood, sweat, and tears he gave. But because you don't have any money and you're just a system, you're a system. That's it. And anybody can take on the position of the CEO of any system. And yeah. based on the energy yeah. of that individual will determine what type of righteousness you will even have in that system. And nobody of righteousness yeah. has ever sat in the seat of Hollywood that has been righteous. But you know what's crazy though? They, they like, like we talked about yesterday, they only believe in do as thou will. They don't believe in right and wrong, do as thou will. So when Gail was hitting him with them questions and he was breaking down like, I did this stuff, like he really truly believed that he didn't do anything wrong. And he might not, I, I mean, now we, we gonna keep it a hundred, you know, like some things that he, you know, it's, let's not even speak on it, but, but 30 represents when you are conditioned as a child and that happened, hurt people, hurt people, basically. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Right. Hurt people, hurt people. And it don't even be on purpose. It's just because they don't know no better. But the court don't give a damn about if you know better or not. They like, this is something deeper. It ain't even about what he got, you know, what he got convicted of. Because from my understanding, there was only one incident and... Uh, that they had that had proof, concrete proof of anything. Everything else was just hearsay. Right. You know, so. One thing I feel one is that 30. Don't make it okay, though. Right. 30 is the Trinity all day. 30 is the mind, the mind, the spirit, the mind, body, and spirit. Okay. Three represents you gotta do all of those rituals <laughs> that they use in the biblical text. So they're doing something with that number 30. Didn't Jesus die at yeah, the, the age of 30? Three. Yeah. The number three. It's, it's, it's entertainment. All entertainers are probably like past number threes and a lot of three, three, threes and stuff like that. You got to do his geometria. I think it's called geometria when you add up because it, for some reason in Hollywood, everything that happens, whether it's a death or a prison date, is all aligned. Like they already planned this shit out when you do geometria and you add the numbers together, it equals the same exact data as if they died or the date they went to prison. Right. So, and and now in universalism that's called the Life Path Trilogy. So it is the the look of the life path. You add up your birth number, date, and year, and that is the life path in which the universe has has summoned you to perform. But what happened is in What's the physical realm, in the physical realm, the doctors, they take those life path numbers and they create what is known as a personality trait or characteristic mm. of what that person is going to be. Mm. There's literally only 12 yeah. personalities, yeah. 12 yeah. personalities in, prison, in the they world. They do it in prison, they do it in school, they do it in school, they do it on everything. They there already pre premeditate. You know, so when you walk in there, you wonder why these teachers picking on you and shit because you have you have a life path number that's far past there. Yeah, and Since guess what? Many times than them. And guess what? Those teachers know your birthday because what do they make you do when you get your record at school? The teacher knows your last name, your first name, your address, and all that. They know your birthday. They know your social security number. They can even vibe off that. You know, and it's just so much, man. We can go on and on and on, but the way so that I born, feel. He's born in January 8th, 1967. So what does that add up to? I don't know, but really you got to add it up. I'm going to be doing a Life Path um, video on him. I was supposed to do it before a, a few of my subscribers had asked me to do that. But um, I never got to his number but I know that it is a number that, because he's a Capricorn and and Saturn is his his main ruler. But yet he also has Sagittarius. Yeah, he has Sagittarius in his sign as well. I did glance over his um, natal chart, but I'll be going and doing a video on that soon. So I'll break all that down. His life path number and why, you know, that even the date of his um incarceration when he was indicted all that is the same it's all the same yeah so we'll definitely go over that but back to the orisha is there anything that we should know of how to meditate upon him for those who are orisha um 
you know, people who who study the Orisha, um, is there any type of prayer or any type of candles or anything that we can use to meditate upon him while we're trying to help him, you know, with the statute of limitation being removed from the Chicago trial? Is there anything that we can do as a collaborative a society collaborative. I mean, yeah, like St. Mary, like the Orishas are tied to the Catholic Saints because once they got here, they had to whitewash them basically. So, uh, like St. Mary, St. John, St. Joseph, um, you can do work, at, go, to, go to the crossroads if you happen to be sent by a train track and pray. Um, you know, just wish him positive energy because we, again, we can't really. Uh, mm, how can I put this? Interject. We can't really interfere. Yeah, I know. With what, because it is it is a deeper reason as to why this is happening to him, and it may be so he can overcome it. And like, just like Bill Cosby got his conviction overturned, they found that man ain't did nothing to nobody. And right. Sitting there, sitting in there all that time. Right. You know, so um, we can just send him light and love, and you know, the will of whatever. God's will, you know, whatever the, the universe has for him, let him receive it in abundance, because abundance is his birthright. Mm-hmm. You know, that is our birthright. And with repetition, things change. The universe starts to move around for us. So, you know, just keep him in your prayers. Absolutely. But we got to get, we got to get an interview with this man so we can even figure out, you know, like, what, what, what's really going on? Well, so we already that got not, the. He don't got a chance to say that. Well, he don't we, have a chance to say anything. Right, but we do have an interview with him. If we go deeply and look and listen to his music and go to his catalog and really and truly, genuinely get deep subliminally with what he's saying and go deeper than the sexual connotations and all of that, but look deeper, we're going to find who he is inside. You know what I'm trying to say? And that's why people wanted to mute him because they did not want us to get to know him. You feel me? So when you say that, well, what do we do? How do we get this? How do we get this established? And how do we get to know? He's going to come out and tell his story. And that's when it's going to be so beautiful. You know what I'm saying? And Joycelyn is another one that's being by his side. And I was talking to someone from Texas today that literally said that I wouldn't be surprised if they wouldn't come out with the the greatest love story ever told. You know what I mean? Even after waiting all those years for him. It sounds ridiculous because in the physical realm, that type of thing doesn't happen too often. Now, Sky, are you still with us? Let's see if she's still online. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So what is your take on what we have been talking about? Because, you, you know, we can get deep. Very, very good point. I loved listening to uh, both sides. And um, it's just been a very insightful. Mm-hmm. Very insightful. But I do, looking at, you know, uh, what Arisha was saying, is that what, is that what we're calling her? Oshun. Oshun, Oshun. Okay. Looking at what Oshun was saying. You might have to go get off your speaker. Hold on, guys. You might have to get off your speaker because there's a lot of feedback. Or either mute your phone while Marce- yeah, while um, Sky's talking. Go ahead. But yeah, uh, like she was saying, everything happens for a reason, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and, you know, you are the creator of your own destiny. So I never looked at it from that side. Like, you know, this is all happening for a reason. Maybe he's manifesting it in his own life some subconscious way, like she was saying. I never really thought about it like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I do think that point of view is very interesting. I really do. <laughs> yes, I'm telling you. Oh, she knows what she's talking about. And that's why I had to get her again and tell her, please come back on the show. I really, really wanted to get her feedback because everything she was saying was so correct. And Oshuna, I thank you so much. Thank you for being oh, here. Oh, thank you. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for having me. Yesterday was 
it was a, a vibe yesterday. This is a vibe today too. Yeah, but you it's know? a little slower, <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it a little slower today? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's okay though. It it's is. All right. It is now. The universe, um, you know. Right. Remember, we talked about coming to Chicago to see you, right? Yes. And having yes. a meetup. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um. Thank you for today as well because um I tried to call the Metropolitan Community Center or not Community Center, uh -huh. Lord <laughs> Correctional <laughs> Center. <laughs> And they were closed, and I was wondering why they were closed because I want to give people the opportunity to um, to write him and to share their, um, you know, if they wanted to share financial blessings with him, you know, all of that. And um, so I did have uh, the address. Do you still have the address, Oshun? Yeah, 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 I got it. Could you speak uh, it out uh, to us? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, while I'm receiving that information, for it's, uh, it's Oshun Rende, which is uh, a daughter of Oshun or Oshun's oh, yeah. return. It's something that they give you. It's a name they give you. You can't pick your own name, but so I'm not Oshun. No, I'm a daughter. I'm a daughter of Ocean. Oh, okay. but there's only one. Right, so, right. So you like, so you yeah. like Oshun Junior. Something like that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Um, and you want to keep those things, um, you know, private because also in the industry, they can't find out who had, who's your guardian and turn them against you. Oh, you know, or try. Oh, yeah, it's a dirty game. Okay. I see. He is in, what's it called? Okay, I see it now. Um, Robert Sylvester Kelly, inmate number 0962703535. And it's the Metropolitan Correctional Center. And it's 71 West Van Buren Street, Chicago, Illinois. Six zero six two one. Thank you so much, um, Oshun. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So, uh, Sunday we're going to be on, and we're going to be talking about a portion of his life, Robert Sylvester Kelly's life, and the music. And then I want to get deeper into the song that we're going to listen to, and we're going to really analyze that. And it's important that you brought up his music because one thing that he came to the planet with was his voice. Mm -hmm. But the very thing that God blessed him with is the very thing that the physical realm muted him with. And it was the voice. Yeah. Yeah. Does anyone have anything particularly to say about that before we head out? Sky? Oh, no. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. I think don't know if she's still there or not, but that's something important. Why was he muted when God gave him that gift? And I know the chat is is burning up. <laughs> I know it's going to be burning up when we um, when we actually view this video and it will be on this video will be on tomorrow 6 p.m well it'll be on on the the uh premiere so it will premiere tomorrow at 6 p.m and i only have one stream of of uh audio so i know that youtube can't i don't know what happened today but it was something and as you said ashun you said keep it keep it Positive, no matter what happens. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I thank you so much. And to yeah, you. Well, that's what we need to mm -hmm. vibrate off of um, at this time. Amen. And thank you so much, Sky. <laughs> I love her input. Yeah. Very... It was very <laughs> short. I think she's either at work or she had to I head know. out. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I care. Oh, okay. But I but think yeah, I'm gonna say a special prayer for him. Yes. Um, 
Jeff, uh, what is it, Mondays? We need to, to ask Eshu to guide him and, and, and bless him and, you know, whatever the will is. Yeah. Light that candle. Go get a purple candle. That is the the highest chakra. And mm -hmm. and light it between the time of three and six PM and just meditate with his music. Maybe turn on some music or something like that, you know. Wear something mm -hmm. that reflects and resembles music. And that will help him to manifest and meditate on how he's going to get himself out of this. Because he's constantly looking at the distorted mirror right now. Not seeing the great right. abundance. He's got to call his mm -hmm. energy back. That's what he's yeah. got to do. He's got to reclaim his energy from them. They've been sucking him dry since he's been alive, you know? Like, yeah. everything that he's done, all his records, all the, you know, running run them left and right like a chicken with his head cut off. You know, he got to reclaim his energy. Yeah. Yes. So and that's we, not fair. That is not fair for someone who has to be born just like that. You know, like, I could see if you were an adult and you made that conscious decision, but you, I don't think he was. No. He was exactly oh. taken advantage of by the system the same way the system is trying to tell, show the world that they took advantage of him by telling the world to believe the mass media lie that was imprinted upon him being a child uh, abuser or a womanizer. That's exactly what they did with him. But they chose to take the story and flip it back and say that they're the victims because of what he had done while being in in their system. How can they be right and he be wrong when he was the one that gave so many years of his life and he sat back and watched his counterparts and his peers do the things that they did over the course of their careers and they never got reprimanded. Many of them got praised for it. Elvis Presley got praised for it. Hugh Hefner yeah. got praised for it. He married a 14 year old girl. Now, did he? His uh, own cousin. Well. I mean, we can go on and on and on. I mean, this is yeah. something that took place back before Chuck Berry was born. And he was born in the 40s, 30s. You know what I'm saying? Ray Charles had a clip of, oh, yeah, and we talked about the James Brown um, commercial. You got to talk about that again today. But oh, yeah, man. talk hey, about that. Y'all got to go see this. <laughs> Let's see here. Let me tell y'all how these folks be playing us. Go and look at Mercedes Benz, the car that y'all love so, so much. And go to the uh, Google James Brown and Mercedes Benz commercial. Now, this commercial had to be, uh, I thought James Brown was dead. Look, this is a recent commercial. It looks like, and it, it has the S Class 550, I think, or something like that. So that car just came out. Whatever cars in this this uh this commercial came out, and it's a Benz commercial. And he's knocking on a door, and he goes to see a, a, a man. And this man is dressed in red, and he he acts he's acting all crazy. And he asks the man, he says, "Look, I can't dance no more. I can't move no more. My hair falling out. They don't love me no more. I can't do the split. My back hurt. I need fifty more years." And he says, "Okay, well, race me." Well, he was the devil. Hello. What did he say? So, Wait a minute, you're you're cutting out because you're real far away. You're not in. You got to be in near your mic. But but the last thing I heard you so said was he, that he, what what the last thing I heard you said was he said I can't move. I can't do anything. Help me out. And then what 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 happened? Oh yeah. What so happened? they made it, he made a deal with the devil. He said if you can beat me in a in a, in a, a car race with a Benz or something, then I'll give you fifty more years of life and. You know, James Brown beat the devil at his own game, I guess. And at the end of the commercial, he was back looking young again. So basically, he sold his soul all over again. So wow. our kids, like, so what is he going to do? Is he going to separate himself or is he going to reinvent himself and sell his soul once more and be, give him 50 and 100 more years? You know, like, yeah. is, this is ultimately spiritual warfare. This is this is spiritual, what he's going through. Now, just not turning the fact that he's in jail. We're talking about what's happening to him spiritual he is fighting for his kids i know he's fighting right now because he would be free otherwise if he wasn't mm. he would be free they would yeah. free. they have the power to free him and clear him of everything but 
because he's like, hell no, I'm not. It's like, you know, some people take it to trial. I didn't do that. Like I did. This is not me. Yeah, I took it to trial. 34 years. you won. Yep. Yep, they told me. They told me, I'll give you six months in county jail for what you did. I'm like, well, six months to 34 years is a long, a big gap in between. How could you give me six months for something that you feel, uh, you know, you've already convicted, not convicted, but indicted me on with all these counts? Because I knew the things that they were telling me I did was not correct. And they added charge yeah. on type of charge on type of charge. Me asking the police officer in the back of the cruiser what time it was, was a Im- implication of uh, trying to bribe the police. Things like yeah, that. And then that's another crash. felony. Like, come on, come on. Yeah. But we made it through. You're right. And so we are only as guilty as our conscience will make us. And the devil is in the details. So we need to be very careful with what we see. So I do, I, I will do my but ritual. Like, mm-hmm. For R. Kelly. Like I said yesterday, though, we won, we won, we won with him shooting in the gym. You know, we don't know what they had that man do just to hold it over his head. Yeah. Later on, oh, if you go for up and try to, try to leave or anything, this is what's going to be put out. You know, there's no telling us they play those types of games with them. So, mm-hmm. it comes down to him, again, separating himself and not selling out again. Separation. Yeah, as I yeah. I mean, right. I mean, nobody around him passed, or he didn't sacrifice anyone else. It might have been himself. He might have been the sacrifice for all of them to live good. Okay, he might have been the sacrifice, and he might have been okay with it. Just, just so his loved one went out and got hurt, he might be that type of person. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. But I, I, I guarantee you, it's the next couple months something's gonna come to the surface about what's going on with him you know because i don't think it's right right and we were just we we had a video um podcast where we asked the question if he pled guilty would we feel um any other way would we feel that he's guilty if he pled guilty if they said okay we're going to use the statute of limitations on the chicago trial we're going to throw out minnesota and then we're going to go back and give you 10 years on the appeal to clear your name. But you have to say that you're guilty. Should he take that plea? Oh, yeah, they do that too. You know they do that. You know it. Oh, that's yeah, why it took five cool. years. Oh, Look, that's why it took five years for me to sit on bond because they they were waiting for me to admit guilt. And they know it damn well that, that was not the case. Right. They know better. You know, so it just—I'm just asking, when is the time gonna be where we do away with them? Like, when is the? You know, I'm getting so tired. Of, it's already you know, done tired. away. It's already done away. That's why the system is ridiculous. It looks illiterate. It looks very <laughs> uh, um, um, immoral. They're breaking all the rules where they can sentence someone, and at the end of sentencing, that should be it. But they attached more onto his sentencing with new evidence at sentencing, which caused them to go from beyond what prosecution was asking of 25 years to 30. And then they threw out at least seven. They terminated seven cases that or seven issues that never even made it to trial. Never even touched trial because they had no way to connect and tie it to the situations because they forgot to add this or forgot to add that. That's why my grandmother always said it's best for, for you to tell the truth, because if you have to tell a lie, you're going to have to cover that lie up with something else. And then when it comes out in the wash, you're going to be standing there looking ridiculous, truly ridiculous. So I so thank you. Thank you, though. We have reached our maximum time tonight and we really appreciate you. The chat is moving and thanking you for being here and giving of your precious time another day. Um, I do apologize for the mishap on the uh, recording, but I'm going to make sure today. Yeah, I'm going to make sure today is the day. 
So it'll be ready for you tomorrow at 6 p.m. That will be Saturday. Oh, no, tomorrow's Friday. Friday, 6 p.m., July 22nd. I'm going to upload and thank everyone for being patient with me and um, coming back. And uh, so with that, thank you, ladies, for being with us. And as always, keep it 100, and we'll see you next time. Okay.